This man. Give a warm welcome for my favorite ginger in the world, Steve Craig. Steve Craig. Thank you. Thank you all. Isn't it so fucking great when the guy that introduces me goes, he was really not funny. <laughs> and now he's... Eh. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for coming out. This is my first time headlining. Uh, so, uh, thank you. So this could go terribly. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you for applauding. Uh, how about we do this? How about before we get this thing started? Let's, uh, let's cheers, man. Let's finish our drinks. Thank you all for being wonderful, coming out and seeing my silly giggles. Let's down these bad boys. I always like to pregame before I go drive Uber. Okay. So this should be good. Should be a fun night. Do you guys remember Aubrey from earlier? Yeah. Wasn't it so cool that she was dressed like The Rock in that one fanny pack picture? <laughs> Fucking awesome, holy moly. I wanted to start like that. There we go. Uh, I forget, I don't know if Tom did this earlier. How many people here are local? Locals make some noise. Yay, and how many people here are tourists? Tourists make some noise. Holy moly, we are outnumbered. All right, uh, tourists, holy crap move here, dude. It is amazing. When you live in Key West, you feel like you're 10 again uh, because every morning you wake up the broke uh, <laughs> in a house you don't own and you jump on your bicycle and ride into town looking for boobies. <laughs> and all your friends, they got bikes too. You get a little biker gang going on. Only difference is now you can be drunk legally. <laughs> I should also clarify something. Uh, I, uh, despite my whole general vibe, uh, I don't smoke weed. So I do sell my pee. <laughs> Come meet me after the show. Your doctor's gonna, <laughs> you're gonna pass your drug test, but your doctor will talk to you about cholesterol. <laughs> Not the only thing I do. I also, uh, I also run the Jeep rental company on the island. <laughs> Thank you. Really, because I think, what the fuck? Because <laughs> where else do you want to rent a rugged mountain climbing off-road four by four vehicle than on a flat island? <laughs> People are like, where can we go off-roading? I go, it's easy. You drive to the dock and get a boat. <laughs> Right, there is one mountain in the Keys and it's the landfill. <laughs> Nobody wants to summit Mount Trashmore, all right? We had a dude try to steal one of the Jeeps the other day. <laughs> yeah, what, where is he gonna go? <laughs> there is a 100 mile one lane highway full of board cops between here and freedom. <laughs> I called the cops, I told them to set up the, like, the blockade at mile marker 100. <laughs> I wanted the guy to get a little taste before he got out. <laughs> he wore a neon orange shirt and tried to hide from the police in the ocean. <laughs> he was like, they're not finding this Nemo. <laughs> they found Nemo, just so you know. Oh my God, we brought the Jeeps down to compete with golf carts. <laughs> and we're losing! <laughs> Because people look at a golf cart and they go, you can't get a DUI in a golf cart. And I have never told them that that's not true at all. <laughs> never at all. You know you can get a DUI on a bicycle? Yes. What do they take away? <laughs> they take your fucking bike? How does that work? Hey, you can't ride your car. Cool, I'll just continue on this. There's a guy in a fucking unicycle the next day. How does that work? I don't get it, man. I had to go to court for Jeep-related things recently. <laughs> Shit, thank you, Jeep-related things. Uh, and while I was in court, I overheard two lawyers talking. Uh, and they were like, all right, today we gotta see the medical examiner, we gotta see the, the, fam oh, what's it, the victim's family. Oh, and then we have the guy from the Jeep rental company. <laughs> and the other lawyer went, ick. <laughs> and it reminded me of being single, being at a bars. 
having girls come up to me and my buddies and ask us, what do we do? And my buddies will be like, well, I'm a boat captain. And they go, ooh. And they look at me and go, what do you do? And I go, I rent Jeeps. And they go, ick. <laughs> <laughs> and it's what I love so much about my girlfriend, because of all the numerous women that turned me down, she's the first. That was a hurtful laugh. <laughs> Weren't you the south side person on my? You know what? Fuck it. I'm from the north side now. How about that, Mr. Chicago man? Ick. <laughs> You're one of the girls that rejected me, aren't you? Holy moly. What I loved about my girlfriend, of all the numerous women that turned me down, you don't need to laugh. She's the first one I told I'm a captain. Yeah. I may not be a boat captain, but all the boat captains use my pee. I was at a, be, before I was, uh, before I was taken, uh, I was single, what? <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore the hurtful giggles, okay? <laughs> before I was taken, uh, I was out at a bar, me and this woman started hitting it off. Uh, then my buddy showed up and she started hitting it off with him and when he went to the bathroom, she turned to me and she was like, hey, you're cute and I would go home with you, but you're a redhead and that's gross. <laughs> I think it was your daughter. Um, <laughs> I was like, ow, I didn't know what the fuck to do. I just went, yeah, we are gross. <laughs> and then I started plotting my revenge because you gotta treat revenge like a crock pot, all right? You can't just get right out in front and burn it. No, you gotta let it simmer in the back. So when you finally get to get, in, get bite a little nice meaty pita out of that rude bitch, uh, it's nice. So um, she starts with hanging and talking, blah, blah, yipping and yapping, it's all fun. Then she tells us she was on a uh, Tinder date and the Tinder date didn't show up. And I went, oh, you have a Tinder? Can I see it? And like an idiot that didn't just tell someone they were gross to their face, she handed me her phone. <laughs> and I proceeded to swipe right to everyone that has ever existed, ever. <laughs> oh my God, I set the range to 100 miles. I was liking people from Cuba. I said everything. There was friction was generated by my finger. The phone came because it decided, it decided there was no more room for love in its operating system. And I handed her back her phone. So anyways, Tony from earlier goes home and fucks her and uh, I'm still salty. Next morning, he sends me a picture, a screenshot of her phone. She's got 283 waiting messages. <laughs> right? He goes, I think Sarah, which by the way is when I learned her name was Sarah. Uh, I think Sarah wants to talk to you. And I was like, she's got enough people to talk to. <laughs> I just think it's weird. I think making fun of somebody for something they have no control over, is, it's, it's, there's nothing fun. There's nothing fun about it. She, I, it would make more sense if she made fun of me for something I could control. Like I went to the eye doctor recently and the eye doctor looked into my eye and then said, congratulations, you don't have diabetes. Which is the most medical school way I've ever been called fat in my life. <laughs> like, I almost was impressed, but congratulations was hurtful. Like, dude, I didn't walk in here limping and needing to pee again, no. My eyesight's bad. He pulled out a picture, he was like, see that you're, the blood vessels in your eyes, see how they're all a straight line and not coiled at all? I went, no, I can't see. In fact, that's kind of why I'm here. It'd be like if I went to the dentist and the dentist looked at my teeth and went healthy prostate. Like, I like just look down the tube. <laughs> I ended up leaving with contacts, insulin, and a Snickers bar. It was good. <laughs> By the way, you never even need to tell, if you know any fat people, you never need to tell them they're fat, all right? Fat people know they're fat. I didn't wake up this morning going, no, the witch's curse came true, no. <laughs> 
I had a choice all my life to go running or have 10 beers. And as you can see, I'm fun at parties. So, thank you. I had to fucking be. You guys know I suck, right? <laughs> no, 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 don't worry about it. It's great. I never need to tell someone. I had a dude come into the shop the other day. Uh, he asked for directions to a bank, and when I gave him the directions, he looked at me and said, thank God for fat redheads. So, like, he was half right, you know, half on point. That was cool. I didn't even know what the hell to do. I just was like, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I agree. Thank God for fat redheads. <laughs> Wasn't for us, he would have been wandering around penniless. Now he can find the bank to withdraw the two cents he has in his account. <laughs> Give him back to me for throwing his two cents. Buddy, uh, yeah. that's why you hear about people wandering in the desert for like 40 days and nights. No fat redheads in the desert. <laughs> but you never lost in Dublin. Anyways, there we go. Let's go back to my girlfriend, all right? Let's go back. You remember Kristen from earlier. Let's, uh... <laughs> she surprised me today. She surprised me. She is, uh... She got me a, she got me a trip. She, she bought a vacation for me. On Thursday, we're going to Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota, I'm gonna be traveling on St. Patty's Day to negative 50 degrees. I think she hates me. But I took her recently to the Renaissance Fair uh, and I, I really wasn't feeling it. So she was like, you need to get into the spirit of the Renaissance. So I traded her for land. She's uh... <laughs> I, t I had to take her bike to get here today, all right? <laughs> Mine's in the shop. While I was riding my bike, uh, it snapped in half. <laughs> you guys know a bike could do that? <laughs> Spontaneously unicycle? I didn't know they could do that. I took it to the bike shop to get it repaired. They were like, hey, we got another frame. It's ready to go. I was like, cool. They put the new frame on my bike, and then they applied a sticker that said, you should not ride this bike if you exceed 400 pounds. <laughs> Yeah, great. Now it hurt my face, my leg, and my feelings. Thank you, bike shop. So I took the girlfriend's bike to get here today, but there was a problem with her bike, too. It's, uh, I noticed the problem. I called her up. I went, hey, girlfriend. You guys don't need to know her name. I went, uh, hey, girlfriend, your bike's front brakes are constantly engaged. So she said back to me, well, it's nice that something's engaged. <laughs> so now I'm ring shopping. Do you guys know the average cost of a wedding ring is five grand? You know it costs nothing? Breaking up! I'm kidding, I'm, I bought the ring. She said no, so I stole her bike. She's uh... No, she wanted me to propose to her at Disney World. Which, uh, what? Great plan, great, I think, you know what? I don't wanna make two huge regrets in one day. I don't wanna do that. Proposing at Disney World? I looked it up. Uh, or what's it, before I even looked it up, she was like, I want you to propose to me in front of the castle during the fireworks, and I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> I looked up, you can get a Disney photographer, and he's tipping an extra, like, 20 bucks. He'll Photoshop out the nine other couples proposing in the background. <laughs> everybody proposes at Disney, everybody. Whatever. How the fuck did that get silenced? Wow. I'm almost terrified. Can we bring back out The Rock from earlier? Jesus Christ. But she, uh, what the fuck was I thinking? Hold on, I got a drink. But it's kind of weird because I used to work at Disney World. And it's kind of weird having a girlfriend that's interested in you proposing at your old job. <laughs> like, you never hear a girl be like, it would be so romantic if he got down on one knee in the women's heels section of Foot Locker. <laughs> no, no. And let me prove to you I used to work for Disney, all right? Real quick before anything, uh, I still remember the theme park spiel that played uh, every two minutes for eight, what's it, eight hours a day for six months of my goddamn life. 
It went something like, um, for your safety, remain seated with the doors closed, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside while the tram is moving, and supervise your children. Para su seguridad, favor de permanecer sentados. Por los puertos cerrados. Mantimiento sus manos, brazos, pies y piernas adentro, mientras que tranvía este movimiento. Y vigilen a sus niños. Gracias. I speak no Spanish. That was all parrot. But thank you for applauding yet another white guy that speaks no Spanish. It was weird. Like, I, uh, I applied for Disney. Uh, they put me in the parking lot. That was my job. I was a parking lot attendant. I applied to be a character performer. I applied to be goofy. Uh, all I did was send him a picture of me, because of fucking... <laughs> And they were like, this guy needs to get hit by a car. So <laughs> they made me a cast member. You're not even an employee when you work at Disney. They call you cast members. Which is kind of like if they were like, it's not a pyramid scheme, it's a pyramid team. <laughs> you know, you're not an employee, you're a cast member. Welcome to our cast system. <laughs> But I did find out Disney had to lay off 30,000 people during the pandemic. Can you imagine getting fired from Disney World? <laughs> like you walk down the cartoon hallway to the magical doors and there's your boss. Hey, uh, <laughs> these are unprecedented times. <laughs> and we would have kept you, but the money's in the Mandalorian. <laughs> If you can dream it, as long as that dream's not working for me, you can do it. Now don't let the door hit you on the way out. Por favor, manténganse en el jalo de las puertas. Thank you. Mickey speaks Spanish. How cool is that? I used to do that voice when I was working in the Disney parking lot. I was on the courtesy tram, those like big giant trams they drive you around in the parking lot. Cheapest ride at Disney, by the way, you only gotta pay parking. Um, I would sit on the back of the tram and I would use the voice and then halfway through I'd just quit it. I'd be like, uh, welcome aboard everyone. Welcome to your Walt Disney World courtesy tram. Please remember to keep your hands, arms, <coughs> feet and legs inside the tram while it's moving right along. <laughs> And kids would look up and look for Mickey and be like, what happened? And I tell you, there is no better feeling than watching the light in a child's eye. <laughs> Go out. <laughs> Super fun. You guys are awesome. It was a really fucking weird day today, man. So I'm glad. Like, dude, here's, here's a weird thing that I saw today. It's just a weird thing that I, I'm passing on my way over here. There was a dude uh, out in front of his house, leaf blowing. It's 30 knot winds. <laughs> what in the fuck? What leaves still remain? <laughs> that the wind's not gonna clear for you anyway. He was just I swear to God, I wanna go by when it's raining to see if he's sprinkling the lawn. <laughs> I'm gonna go by tonight to see if he's tanning. <laughs> and then, er, even just like 10 minutes later, I see a lady on the back of a motorcycle wind whipping in her hair. She's got a mirror and a comb. I almost was like, that's gotta be that guy's wife. <laughs> She's with another man. I was gonna go back and tell him, and I was like, he's busy blowing leaves. I can't really do anything about it. Then we had to deliver a Jeep. We had to deliver, a, I had to deliver one of those fucking Jeeps. I had to take one down to the, uh, uh, the I, we had somebody that needed one delivered to the southernmost house, and I fucked up and delivered it to the southernmost guest mansion. Ah, oh, my bad. So the lady called me an idiot. Which, god damn it, this town needs to rename everything. Tourists, if you go down to the southern, if you tell people you're by the southernmost, 
You were referring to the southernmost point, the southernmost bar, the southernmost beach cafe, the southernmost cafe, the southernmost guest mansion, the southernmost house, the southernmost inn, the southernmost hotel, the southernmost hotel, the southernmost side, all right? I'm gonna get, it, Aubrey doesn't need an investor. I need an investor, I'm opening up a hotel down there calling it the Northern Least. <laughs> Getting them in. That lady's gonna show up, can I come into your Northern Least hotel? Mm-mm, sorry. I even felt bad. I was like, lady, I'm so sorry. I thought you could afford a mansion. My bad, my bad. <laughs> kind of weird. I think the girlfriend's gonna fit in very well with my family too. I, uh, I got a weird family. Uh, they're in the front, they're in the front row. They, they haven't looked at me the whole show, so. <laughs> got a weird family. <laughs> Like they rec we recently went to Ireland, yeah? I didn't find out until like the day of, my parents bought me a ticket. I thought I was getting returned, like. <laughs> <laughs> if you're ever thinking of going to Ireland, uh, it's just Europe's Wisconsin, man. Just <laughs> funny accents and beer drinkers driving on the wrong side of the road. That's about it. <laughs> But uh, my dad, my dad thinks I'm immature, and I think he's the poopy head. My dad thinks I'm immature. <laughs> but he himself is immature. Like recently, he told me to grow up and help him apply a Batman sticker to a cool car <laughs> in the same sense. My earliest memory of him telling me to grow up was him uh, saying, telling me to grow up and then going, uh, hey man, look at this cool hole I drilled in a watermelon. I'm gonna put a firework in it. <laughs> but he didn't just put a firework. He took one of those mortars that fire out of the can in it. He didn't just take a mortar. He took a four stacked on top mortar, put it face down in this watermelon. The mortar explodes the watermelon everywhere. Fireworks scatter around the house, around the cul-de-sac, blowing up under cars, under people. I got burns, baby. And uh, then I told him, I was like, what the hell is wrong with you? And he looked at me and went, grow up. I think he just wants me to be taller. I think that's it. When I was young, he did this weird thing. Uh, he used to run an auto auction and uh, we had guard dogs at the auto auction. And uh, one day he decided, super funny, <laughs> all right, he picked me up, held me over the fence, and had the guard dogs bite me. <laughs> I don't know why, when asking him, he went, oh yeah, I don't remember why I did that, man. <laughs> Brought me inside the auction, and then my mom saw it, and she was like, oh my God, he got bit, I'll go get water. <laughs> like it was on fire. <laughs> And my dad's like, that's not what you're supposed to get him. And she was like, fine, I'll get him Sprite. <laughs> like lemon and lime's gonna fix this bad boy. They propped me up and my dad to keep me occupied while he still had to work and I couldn't move because of the fucking guard dogs. He, uh, he turned on, on the TV nearby me, Godzilla 2000. That's the bad one. <laughs> So I couldn't move and I had to sit there watching Godzilla 2000 and my mom brings over ginger ale and saltines because I guess that was the ultimate end conclusion. So I prefer cats. Uh, I'm a kitty cat man. My sister's a dog groomer and she was recently bit by a dog. She was uh, bit by an Alaskan Malamute. All right. And the, uh, she's actually suing. She's suing the uh, owners of the Malamute, which is going to be the industry's first ever Malamute malice suit. But... <laughs> but, <laughs> but she did that. But I thought about it. I was like, yeah, when a dog bites you, it's kind of a really big deal, all right? You got to call the family. Everything's a huge ordeal. Oh, my God, was it a rescue? I love him so much. He's so beautiful. Uh, when a cat bites you, just open the door and let it outside. <laughs> Go to the SPCA, 60 bucks, you get a new one. It's perfect. <laughs> she was even concerned. She was like, well, oh my God, while I'm in the hospital, who's gonna take care of my dog? He has to be let out for, to go to the bathroom at 5 a.m., 7 a.m., 6, 9 a.m. I think it has a bladder problem. I left the apartment for a week, didn't tell the cat, clean the place up. <laughs> right, every pillow was nicely needed. <laughs> There was a, like, all, like there were three dead rats on the counter and an invoice from the cat. <laughs> Perfect. He's a, he's a hell of a cat, dude. He's 25 pounds. A tw I got a chonker. All right. He's a kitty cannonball. This, his name's Big Chungus, all right? He's huge. 
and he's got a meow like like a like a if your grandmother chain smoked, like a fucking Marlboro Mima. He's sitting there, leaning over. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to diet. I took him to the vet, and they were like, here's something you could do. Uh, get him a bowl with spikes sticking out of it. Weird fucking doctors in this town, all right? First they make fun of you for diabetes, then they say spike bowls are solution to your cat problems. Because apparently the, the thing that makes the bowl with the spikes sticking out of it fix the cat's eating problem is the cat goes to eat the food really, really fast, but it can't because it encounters a bowl with spikes sticking out of it. <laughs> then she told me to get him this really expensive food that actually does way less for the cat, like his kitty kale or something. I got him that thing. And he's still not losing weight. And then I go outside and my roommate sees him and he goes, oh, there's my big chonker. And he's my big chonker. But she goes, there he is. He's been coming over to my place and eating my cat's food. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, apparently she caught him in the bag the other day actually shoveling food into his mouth, just like, oh, oh, oh. And I realized the diet wasn't working, so I sat him down next to me. We had ginger ale, saltines, and watched Godzilla 2000. All right. It's actually about time for me to start wrapping this up. I want to do this. First off, thank you all for coming out. It's my first time trying this. Thank you. You guys are amazing. If you weren't here, this would be really, really weird. I'd just be a crazy guy looking out of the crowd being like, I got a fat cat. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you real quick a story. It might not be as funny, but whatever. Um, a story, this is the first time I ever did stand up in this town, this is how it went. It was at a bar called Mary Ellen's. That's Tony, he cackles. Uh, it was at a bar called Mary Ellen's. And uh, we had to set up the stage. We had to carry it down from the rafters, put it up in front of the bar. Crazy people going in and out of the bar the whole time. I got on stage, got in front of the mic, and I ate shit for about a minute and a half until one woman in the bar looks at me, gets out of her seat, and starts approaching me. And not in like a fun way, not in like a hey honey. No, she, without moving, her head didn't move with the rest of her body, just starts approaching me <laughs> and I start commenting. I go, oh, hey, how you doing? You seem really, really nice. I like your dress and I like your heels. And when I said I like her heels, she proceeded to, without ceasing the initial momentum of coming after me, remove her heels. <laughs> Just like, bleh, bleh. And then I said, oh yeah, those are really nice. And she went, well, do you wanna see them? Or do you want me to put them through you? <laughs> I've never been threatened before. <laughs> so I didn't know what the hell to do. I just was like, no, just seeing them is fine. You don't gotta put them through me, you're all right. One of the other comedians, he intercepts me. He uh, gets this woman on the microphone. She proceeds to do crazy things, be like, Ebola was a curse of the ancient Egyptians or some shit. All right, crazy stuff. And then she bolts out and leaves her heels. <laughs> And I go to the bar, and I have a Mary Ellen special. That's a PBR, a whiskey, and a, a Slim Jim. Uh, and then I have another special. And then I have another special. And then I go, wait a minute, that woman threatened to stab me. What the fuck? So we did what any normal guys would do. We went over to the heels. We're like, these are the stabby bad heels. And we strung them up and put them in the Mary Ellen's rafters, where they remained until the bar was remodeled after COVID. And I tell you all, <laughs> I tell you all this story because I was a bit terrified of what the audience was going to be like tonight and how the show was going to go, but ultimately, nobody here threatened to stab me. <laughs> so I think it went all right. Well, we're not quite done yet. I got one more thing I want to do and then we'll go. Sound good? All right. I like drinking. There we go. Anybody else in this crowd like drinking? Yeah. None of this is from food. So I've uh, been to so many bars in Key West. I love going out to all the different bars. And I've been to them so many times that as soon as my brain hears a Key West bar name, it gives it an honest slogan. So do you guys want to hear some honest slogans for Key West bars? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yell a bar name out. I may have one. Rick's. 
most roofies under one roof. <laughs> the bull, sir, the naked bar is upstairs. You gotta put your clothes back on. <laughs> Mary Ellen's, let's make a bar out of dead grandma's estate. <laughs> Go find the crazy lady. Say, oh, general horseplay. Order your drink today so you can get it next Tuesday. <laughs> Don's place, because Bear Assets does not serve breakfast. <laughs> Bourbon Street. Bourbon Street. You don't have to hide your strippers if they're men. Publix. What the fuck? <laughs> You're drinking at the Publix? <laughs> You're Sarah from the story earlier. Oh. My God. There we go. I think I've seen your tricycle. Okay. Another bar. Smoke. Two of the same. It's stereo. All right. Smoke and tuna. Why can't we be the hog's breath? Shots and giggles. Feel at home in a bar the size of a Key West apartment. There we go. The green parrot, where everybody's ex likes to hang out. Which, by the way, if you see Jordan, tell her she's a whore. What's up? Uh... <laughs> Sloppy Joe's, where you can have 15 cocktails and still not be drunk. <laughs> Go to Rum and Co. One more time. Margaritaville. Margaritaville, where are all the locals? <laughs> Hogs, Brett, the best place to tell your dad you're gay. <laughs> Because it's so loud. Dad, I'm gay. What's that? You'll pay? I love you, son. I love you, Dad. <laughs> we'll do like four, five, eight more, and then I'll get out of here. Irish Kevins. We're actually just Kevins. <laughs> what song you want to hear on repeat? Wagon Wheel or Sweet Caroline? <laughs> Turtle Crawls. Closed. What's another? <laughs> I'm not falling for that shit. If your bar's most interesting thing is a turtle race, you ain't gonna last in this town. Louis backyard. Louis backyard, where my parents like to dine and fight. <laughs> La ti da, where my parents like to dance and fight. <laughs> The Roost, where my parents regularly drink and fight. <laughs> 915. 915, I've been trying to come up with a slogan for that place, but it has no distinguishing features. Okay. <laughs> Captain Tony's. Captain Tony's. Hemingway pissed here, and you can still smell it. <laughs> I got about two more good ones in me. Two more good ones. There we go. Willie T's, Key West's most exclusive nightclub for the homeless. Fat Tuesday. There we go. What? Fat Tuesday. We spring break even. And I heard the Garden of Eden. Clothing optional doesn't mean everybody's naked. It means everyone stands in a circle waiting for someone to get naked. One more really good one, then I gotta go. Comedy Key West? Yes. The bar we're in right now? How's the path to the exit? Uh, <laughs> damn, Comedy Key <laughs> Comedy Key West. Is that a Hemi? <laughs> Did somebody just ask, is that a Hemi? What the fuck? What does that have to do with me hitting my head on a microphone? Are you trying to make a Jeep Chrysler reference? <laughs> Yeeba, beeba, beeba, that torque and horsepower, boy, oh boy, the Hemi 5.7, I tell you what, man. <laughs> Bop it bop bop, get that Andrew Dockwadoo. Woo, you're the guy from Alabama from Joe's Story. Comedy, comedy key was. Well, apparently my, my mom just said where everyone dates Kristen. Hey, Kristen! My mom thinks you're loose. Comedy key was. The best place to see local and professional stand-up comedy weekday nights for a reasonable rate. I'm Stephen Crane. Thank you. Stephen Crane, everyone.
everybody. Steve Crane. Well done, buddy.